Hello, my name is Gideon Ferber and in this clip I will demonstrate the Maestro 6 workflow. What we are going to do, uh, we are going to cover the interface and then go through the actual workflow. How to create a rundown, how to populate it with instances of templates, how to play the items to air and then we will go a little bit more in depth and see different options or some of the different options and abilities we have for each of the different items. Right now we are watching the Maestro interface that is used for playout. This interface is made out of several parts. We have the preview window, the browser, the rundown area and the controls. For this uh, clip I'm going to use the default layout which is a little bit different and it actually adds the timeline area. The preview will let us see uh, the animation and how each of the templates looks while it goes on air. During playout it will also show us the preview of the next available graphics for us. Uh, the next part is the browser and the browser let us search for templates that were originally created and published in the page editor. In the browser we can later on populate those templates with data and then modify the data of existing rundowns items. The rundown area um, allow us to create and modify rundowns. You can open and control several rundowns simultaneously. The timeline area um, will show us right now the timeline of each and every template that we open and however well this area can show us many other editors as well. Okay, now we are ready to begin and the first step is to create a new rundown. For that we go and click the new button and this is the rundown. The next step is to go in the browser and select and search for the template that we want to use. In this case I'm using the Maestro New folder and in here we have all the different templates again that were originally created and published from the page editor. Each and every template that we select we can see its content and we can also change it, control it, modify it and once we are um, happy with it or once the data is according to our needs we can add it to our rundown. Uh, in the same way we can select now and uh, either drag directly the page to the rundown or again if we want we can open it, modify it and then add it to the rundown. Um, so let's add the different parts and that was the opening and we have the lower third, I want to add also a ticker to the rundown and what else, let's add another lower third and later on we will change its content. Alright, so now we have the rundown, the next thing we can do, we can actually change the order of appearance of the different items. Um, so for example I want to set the opening to be the first instance and then I want to play the background and then the lower third and the ticker and then the new lower third fine. The next thing that we can change is actually the vslot or the virtual layer that the specific item is assigned to. The maestro can actually play up to 255 different layers or different vslots to air simultaneously which gives us a lot of flexibility once we design when we design the, the rundown. So in this case I want to change the ticker from the main layer to the ticker layer which ensures us that it will be on top of everything else right now in the production. For this clip uh, we are using a local render engine to simulate the output signal that in real life environment would come from the DVG. So let's add that and again this is only for this unique environment of the recording of the clip. Otherwise um, of course the out signal would come from the DVG and well, depends on the workflow, goes either to the uh, switcher or to air. Um, the next step would be to connect to the render engine and load the data. And actually once we click the load button, it loads the template, the graphic template, and populate it with the data that we assigned to it from the browser. Once everything is loaded, we are actually ready to play. So we select the item. Immediately we see the content that we, that we typed or assigned 
in the browser and then we can queue it and play it to air. And again you can see immediately that we have the page running in the render engine. We've seen the preview, the, the preview of the next item in the production. Once we are ready to play it, again just click the play button and that's it. Again, red indicates on air. You can see that the lower third now is red in the preview. And again, once we are ready to play it, just click the play button and it will appear on air. Same goes for the ticker. So again, just Q, play, and it appears on air. And now I want to play the next lower third. And as I told you, we can actually change the vslot while on air. And in this case, I want to put it in a different layer, change the content, and let's say that I want to play uh, Angela Merkel, and just uh, cue it and play it. So very, very simple, and you see now Angela Merkel on air instead of Barack Obama. Okay, now we are ready to go a little bit more in depth and see the different options and different abilities we have for each of the different items. Let's start from the ticker. So once we click the ticker, we can actually see the content of the ticker. And according to the icon that you can see in here, it, this icon indicates that all the information of the ticker comes actually from a data source. If we go to the data source tab, we can actually go and find the actual query uh, that holds the information for the ticker. And in this case, this query is the ticker BBC. Now, if we take a look in the columns, we can see which data source is used and then which column out of this data source is used for the ticker. Um, if we want to change the size, we can actually scale that up a bit and we can actually see the query results. Now, whenever we want to change content or, or use different um, information we can always use and create new queries so for example I want a full name out of the characters table and I want also the short name and you can see the, inf the query result appears immediately in here now if I want to change the, uh, the content of the uh, of the ticker I can always go and select a column out of the table out of the query results and just drag it Sorry, we have to save the query, but for instance, if we want to use, let's say, a different query. So let's say I want to use the cities, and this query is already saved, so we can use it while on air. And let's say that I want to replace the areas or the titles with city names. So just drag it, drop it inside, and you can see in the uh, render engine that upon the next change of information instead of uh, defining the title from the previous query it will use the query that we just defined so as you can see it replaced it with Chicago instead of Asia Pacific and again it took it from the ren from the new query that, that we defined okay so we changed data while on air we saw how to create new queries how to use queries one thing that is extremely important as you can see we are not using any scripting whatsoever while using uh, quite complicated queries uh, in the scene or in the production the next element I would like to talk about is the lower third and in the lower third we have, again you can see that all the fields, all the different options are connected to data sources, so images, modes, uh, names, content, everything is connected to a data source. And on top of that, you can see that once I'm changing one item, all the different informations are changing accordingly. So what we've created here is what we call a parameterized query that uh, actually create a connection between the different fields so whenever we define one field all the others uh, react to that field and change the information accordingly of course if we don't want to use the data connection we can always just disable the data connection and then we can just type manually whatever information that we want uh, instead of UK Prime Minister let's say that I don't want the UK just the title Prime Minister fine I can save it drag it into the rundown 
and then we can again of course just queue it, play it, and we have David Cameron instead of UK Prime Minister, Prime Minister done. So we can always manually override the data source information. The last element I would like to show is a um, little bit or would like to talk about is a little bit about uh, transition logic which is again another very nice thing that we can create very easily in the Maestro 6 and for that I would like to use the lower third chiclets and let's first of all load it once it's loaded again we can queue it, play it and you can see the information in here. Let's take the ticker out and now you can see the chiclets. Now the chiclets have a new icon in them. You can see the, the way the page is built in the timeline and the chiclets are using what we call signals. Now signal is an event that uh, sends just an information saying, for in this case, just chiclet loop and give it a value. Now whenever this uh, name or this signal receives a value, we can define the next behavior. So in this case, whenever the value is 1, we are advancing and we have here the signal event called chiclet loop and then it defines which animation should be played, what content should update, and so on. In that way we can actually create logic inside the scene without any need of scripting. So it's another very powerful uh, feature that enables us uh, to have a lot of um, creative flexibility or creative freedom in the production again without the need of scripting. That's it for now. Actually, well, one more thing that I would like to show. As I said at the beginning, we can actually play or control several different rundowns. So, for example, if I would like to open now a new rundown, then again, no problem. And, and as you can see, so we have the original rundown that we worked on. We have the new rundown that I just opened. And in this way, you can actually prepare the next production in line or you can have uh, for example newsroom system controlling one rundown and then a manual rundown being played from the operator and third rundown controlled by automation and so on and on and on so you have full flexibility or you can answer all the needs of the production from one controller one control application well that's it for now uh, of course, the Maestro 6 have many more options, among them newsroom integration, NLE integration, and automation integration. Please feel free to contact us for more details and information about the Maestro. Thank you very much for your time.